Um, we're here to launch the fourth of MK Litfest's anthologies of, of um, new writing from people. And this year we've added a category of non-fiction to the previous ca categories of poetry and, and um, flash fiction. So where do you suggest from your experience people should look for inspiration from their hometown? Because the, the, the theme is Tales from Our City and, and uh, you seem to be somebody who has specialised more than anybody else in abstracting story from place. Yes, well, it's obvious that we should listen to people and uh, listen to their stories. Everybody has a story to tell. That's what the whole philosophy of the Living Archive is based, off, uh, based on. And um, it, there are techniques that can be learned how those collected oral reminiscences, that oral testimony, can be recorded and then translated into an art form or some whatever your art form is, be it poetry or, or whatever it is, or plays. And all around us, there, there, there are buried um, histories, some of which emerge recently. I'll bring you the most recent one that I've had, is, is I just read um, Adrian Tinniswood's book, um, The Vernies, which is about that family that lived just down at Claydon Manor there. And it's an incredible story of one family that lived locally in the 17th century. And in reading their family history, you are actually reading about the 17th century Britain, including the Civil War and everything that that entailed. And, and that's an accessible thing. You, you, can't, you can't borrow Tinniswood's work, but he can just as I couldn't borrow Sir Frank Markham's histories of um, Milton Keynes when I was doing local documentaries. But, but Frank Markham was enough of a scholar to put footnotes there. And the money that I was given to make the play, I gave to a researcher who could go to the House of Lords Records Office, um, the House British Transport Records Office, the Bodleian Library, wherever Frank Markham's note said he got his information from, we were able to go there, get the original document copied, and then that could become part of the spoken utterance of our speech, of our text, so that we could have absolute authenticity in whatever words were spoken within the play. And I think that's what you, you, you can do. It's oral testimony from living people, and, but it's also some buried bits of history that have been forgotten, like the Burson story was completely forgotten. Thank you, Roy.